Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali. A very good morning to you. Remember, you can talk to us on Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook, triple one triple four triple one. That is our SMS line. It's just going to cost you a shilling to talk to us. So get on it, be part of the conversation, and hope you're learning as we are learning here in studio as well. Right now, though, we have a lady in studio who's an avid reader, and today she's just here to share her wisdom, the books she's read with us and why those particular books are the books we should be reading before the end of the year. It's time for Book Circle. Welcome to the show, Daisy. Thank you and happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be like this the whole time. So it's okay. We started at the 1st of July and we're still at it. Thank you so much, Daisy. You've come up with a list of books that we should read. Come out to just a bado, but if we haven't done it, right? Yes. Um, you're an avid reader as well. Uh, yes. Did you start reading at a young age? Yes, I've always been an avid reader. Uh -huh. I think since I learned how to read and write. Are you serious? Did you have the little ladybirds? Do you remember the little tiny books that had like, um, um, what do you Pocahontas? and Sleeping Beauty at that age or did you start a bit older? Um, let's say class four. Ah. But you know like when you're young, yes. you, you've not really specified the kind of books that you want. You really that don't know true. what you want. Yeah. So you just pick everything, anything that you feel like you should read. Yes. You, you well, don't you even know what you want, you're just reading for fun. Yeah. yeah. And then at what point did it become like, you know, I cannot live without reading books? Mm -hmm. Maybe campus. campus. That, that is when I, I I started picking a niche, like specific topics. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. In high school, were you reading? Yes, I because was. Because of those ones, chemistry, kwaapa ju, but katikati ni kokandani ya novel ya Sidney Sheldon, vibaya sana. Yeah, I was reading. Mm -hmm. When you love reading, you'll always find time to do it. That is so true. It yeah. doesn't matter if you'll get a bad grade. Well, no, it does matter. Please, let's get good grades. So when you got to campus, you decided, Ama, you just now chose a direction in terms of the books that you enjoy to read. I didn't really choose. Mm -hmm. I didn't wake up one day and decide that uh, I want to read this. No, like I found topics that really fascinated uh -huh. me and the more I read about those topics uh -huh. the more I develop a keen interest. What topics are these that you are drawn to? Um, I read both fiction and non-fiction books uh -huh. but I really love non-fiction books okay. and if I'm to read fiction books yes I'll read fictions that incorporate the realities that are inherent in the world today. Ah uh, you wouldn't be reading about uh, aliens <laughs> and things that I did, you do not know, you have not experienced. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. So the list that you have today, and you have five books. Maybe we can start with the very first one. Which book? Which book is that for you? Do we start from most important, or Ile, as we build up to your number one? They equally important. So oh, I can perfect. start from anywhere. Let's go. Uh, so the first book that I'm going to talk about today is called um, Yesterday I Cried okay. by Ian Lavanzad. Mm -hmm. It's really a very interesting book and uh, it really talks about, it's about lost childhood. Okay. okay. And uh, very many people are actually dealing with trauma from childhood mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sometimes you may not realize that you're going through it. So if you read the book, Ian La is basically speaking for that child who yeah. has been forced to grow up. That child who, as a young kid, he or she was forced to act otherwise than being himself or herself yeah. because being herself or himself was a choice mm. that circumstances took away from them. Oh. She's also speaking for that child who cannot even define herself because as a kid she was tossed from one household to another. Yes being forced to adopt to different family value system from one religion to another. And in the long run, or in the end, that child was unable to define himself or herself. So Ayala is really speaking for that child. And also she's speaking for that adult or that parent who doesn't even know how to be a parent because she's still nursing wounds from the childhood that they had. Yeah, so the moral story is 
you need to confront your feelings from the past so that you can move forward. Pain so true. demands to be felt mm. and feelings need to be confronted. That is so true. That is it. She is such a powerful speaker as well. I haven't read the book, but I've seen how passionately she speaks. And to imagine putting all that energy in a book, and it must be a you know, mind-blowing uh, kind of experience to be able to read, to read um, that book. It is awesome when you read a book when it has a personal significance. Yes. You feel like, oh, this book was really meant for me. You know, if yeah. you can't relate. Because growing up, most of the times, you'd be asked to be a certain thing. Oh, you're too loud. Wagin wakikuja nyamaza. And maybe that is where you, I'm an entertainer. And that is what I want to do from a young age. It's my personality is who I am. So having that taken away from you, then you're forced to become something something or, else that you're not that you're not yeah and you'll not you'll be living beyond your skin and mm. you want to be comfortable you'll be living a lie yeah yeah oh, definitely looking forward to read that one okay number two in no particular order guys all these are powerful books and that is what daisy has said they're all good so hakuna number one two three we're just naming them randomly cool the second book is everything good will come okay it's by Sif Atta, mm -hmm. and it's a fictional literature. But I really love that the fact that it, co it incorporates all that is all the aspects that are inherent in the world today. Uh, like the first one, the place of a woman. Uh, the chief protagonist in the story is called Yonitan, and uh, she says that women love for love's sake. They marry for marriage's sake, and in the end, they forsake themselves. Then yes. the second aspect is about um, freedom of speech, okay. especially when it comes to journalism. Mm -hmm. like, journalists in the story are expected to please the state, mm. to, to say that which they want to hear and not the truth. So if you find like reporting the truth, you'll be arrested. So should journalists appease the status quo? No. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Yeah. Then okay. another thing is the place of Africa on a global map. Okay. She says there is no place for Africa in a global map. But in a graded world, there is. There at the bottom. They adore some aspects about the African continent. Okay. Like starvation, poverty, wars. They love our animals, but they don't love us. But they'll only love us when we are naked, clapping, singing, <sighs> and dances. For example, the Maasai's who are only sophisticated enough to recognize a photo opportunity. That is what she says. And even when it comes to the Western media, when they're reporting, our, yeah. when they're talking about Africa, mm -hmm. Africans, we have allowed people to tell narrative about ourselves. They're interested in our colonization and not about civilization. Okay. And even like when they are, um, during their donor campaigns, mm -hmm. they paint Africa with one single brush of poverty. Mm. That is it. Oh my goodness. That is a powerful book to read. Yeah, and it is. And I think as, as an African, we should. Yeah, we should. I think we should, everybody should. Great, okay. Number three. Number three is uh, Broken Open. Broken Open. Yes. Okay. Who's written this one? Um, it's Elizabeth. Okay. Yeah. Elizabeth <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> okay. I don't know why it slipped my mind. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it's really a very interesting book. You know, like many of us, most of us, we blame poverty for most of the things. Oh, I'm poor. Why can't you this? Why can't you do this? It's because I'm poor. Mm -hmm. This is not the poor me or mm -hmm. the narcissistic me. Mm -hmm. Like life answers are not cut and dried. They're not black and white. Okay. There are very many shadows of gray that lies between the polar extremes. So, she's saying that difficulties or challenges, yes. they're not supposed to kill the drive. They're supposed to push the ambitions. And um, sometimes the risk of remaining tight in the bud mm. is more than the risk it takes to break open and blossom just like the rosebud. Sometimes we don't want to 
go away from what we know or we mm. don't want to divert from what is normal. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go away from the status quo and peer into the depths of yeah. what we should be. So the moral lesson is yes. you should just accept change no it's matter it's how it's hard or no matter how or no matter how much you're not ready for the changes that come sudden with it. Because change will always happen, ready or not. Yes, so ready or like, not. It's like the seasons. Yes. They come and go. We are in a very cold July, and next month might be different. So change will happen. Yeah, and you need to understand yes. that things will not, will not always go your way. Yep. Change will not happen when you want it to happen. Mm -mm. It is not instantaneous. No, it's yeah. not. Great. Number four. Number four is a book. It's we're now looking at the world through the economics lens. Okay. You don't need to attend a uh, classroom economics. So <laughs> if, you if, you, if you've read this one. <laughs> yeah, it's called Donut Economics. Okay. In between the donuts, uh -huh. there is that safe space. Yes. That is the societal foundations and the ecological ceiling. Mm -hmm. So we should create a safe and just space in between the donuts so that everyone in the house can prosper. This is now when it comes to businesses. Like when we make, when it comes to businesses, mm -hmm. the sole goal of business has been profits. And at the end of the day, we end up seeing profits, forgetting that we are causing harm, the negative externalities to the environment, or there are very many people who are exploited in between. So in between the donut is a safe and just space. Yes. And it's also a sweet space for everyone to, dr to thrive. Oh, wow. This is called Donut? It's called the Donut Economics. Economy. And it also shows the disconnect between mainstream economics and the economics in the outside world. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is an interesting book to read. I probably would never have picked, I pr probably would pick it up because of the title, uh, because it's very, very catchy. And we have your final number five book. Number five is Saving Capitalism. Mm -hmm. Uh, capitalism. There have been heated debates, very many heated debates on yes. capitalism. Yes. And people actually actually saying, no, capitalism is not working for everyone. But it's true, capitalism works in two ways. Mm -hmm. It works for those who work hard mm -hmm. and those who take advantage of other people. Okay. And so saving capitalism, because of that, there have been corporate sustainability and mm -hmm. very many other things that have been introduced. Mm -hmm. And actually, these things are not meant to save the planet, they are meant to save capitalism itself. <laughs> there are things that we need to make peace with when it comes to capitalism. Okay. The society will never be equal. Okay. As much as we talk about putting more guardrails around capitalism, mm -hmm. to give a preferential option to the poor and the vulnerable members of the society, mm -hmm. there's one thing that we need to make peace with. Okay. Poverty is necessary to be, for wealth to be created and the society will never be equal. So mm. as much as you're trying to save capitalism, yes. that's one thing we need to make peace with. We need to reconcile with that fact. And another thing, we cannot work against human nature. Like for example, socialism. Mm -hmm. like there's capitalism and socialism. Mm -hmm. And socialism believes in shared prosperity and misery. But it's hard for a human being, even me, to be realistic. I cannot wake up when someone else is sleeping, yes. and in the end of the day, it's about shared prosperity. Uh -huh. It's only natural for people to work hard for themselves yes. and their families. Uh -huh. So we cannot say socialism. I'll choose capitalism. <laughs> I'm a capitalist, and... Um, so like these things that have been introduced, because capitalism is actually uh, causing a lot of instability and uh, wrecking the planet, mm -hmm. there have been very many measures that have been put in place. And uh, these things, we say we are not saving the planet, but we are saving the capitalism. Yeah. And it was predicted that capitalism will be brought by its own to an end by its own sustainability. Oh. And that's why we are trying to save it. We may lie to ourselves however much we want, yes. that we are saving the planet, we are protecting the interests of the poor, the marginalized, and the trampled within the outskirts of the humanity. But actually, 
we are not. We are not saving the system. And as me, as a normal Kenyan, yes. I cannot even think of eradicating capitalism. Why? The system chooses its players. Mm -hmm. I'm not part of that game. And the players has the key. I don't have the key. So <laughs> all that I can do yes. is I'm an advocate for the common good economics. Okay. But within the realistic ones. Okay. And um, about saving capitalism, yes. it also talks about the power of politics, the corrosive nature mm, of politics mm, mm -hmm. on the economy. Mm -hmm. so like there is a symbiotic relationship, like the corporates, the huge corporates, they sponsor uh -huh. some, any aspirant, uh -huh. potential aspirant uh -huh. who is likely to win. Yes. And when they get to the office, they'll pass rules and regulations that favors their sponsors just to make sure that they pay the political yeah, debts. Yeah, I money, I need my money back, so you'll help me get my money yeah. back in this way. Well, bottom line, yes. average citizen mm -hmm. has a negligible impact when it comes to public policy. And their voice really gets to the policy makers. Mm. And even when it gets there, yeah. they don't pay attention to it. And that is it. Even Kenya, that's how it is. Oh my goodness, Daisy too. They're just books, but I think we've had more conversation from each and every book, each and every topic, and the way you understand, the way you feel this book. I think we have enough reason to be able to capture at least Moja Mambili Kabla Mwaka Uishe. Thank you so much, Daisy, for sharing this with us. Welcome. We're going to take a very short commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Full Circle with Mukali. <laughs>